Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I'd like to welcome everyone to Redeemer this morning as we gather to receive God's gifts and celebrate his triumph over death and remembering his resurrection this Easter morning. Uh, just a couple of announcements uh, by way of how we are doing things this morning. Uh, previously, we had not been singing. Today, the band is lifted. I'm not about to tell you you can't sing on Easter. And so, should you choose to sing or speak the responses, that is uh, your decision. Uh, please do keep your mask on, though, at all times, other than when we are consuming the elements. I will have more to say about communion when that time comes, uh, but until then, I would invite you to rise as we begin our service this morning with the Easter proclamation. Let no one mourn that he has fallen again and again, for forgiveness has risen from the grave. Let no one fear death, for the death of our Savior has set us free. He has destroyed it by enduring it. He destroyed hell when he descended into it. Put it into our Lord, even as it tasted of such. Isaiah foretold this when he said, You, O hell, have been troubled by encountering him beloved. Hell was in an uproar because it was done away with. It was in an uproar because it is mocked. It was in an uproar for it is destroyed. It is in an uproar for it is annihilated. It is in an uproar for it is now made captive. Hell to the body and suffered God. It took earth and encountered heaven. It took what I saw and was overcome by what I did not see. O death, where is thy sting? O hell, where is thy victory? Christ is risen, and you, O death, are annihilated. Christ is risen, and the evil ones are cast down. Christ is risen, and the angels rejoice. Christ is risen. Christ is risen, and the tomb is emptied of its dead. For Christ, having risen from the dead, is become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. You remain standing for the opening hymn.
we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all of our righteousness. We pause now for silent personal reflection. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. With a peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord.
day. Almighty God the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we to celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated at this time. The Old Testament reading for this Easter Sunday is recorded for us in Isaiah chapter 25, beginning with verse 6. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, a rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. And the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him, that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We meditate on the gradual together. Christ has risen from the dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. The epistle is recorded for us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning with verse 1. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preach to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preach to you, unless you believe in vain. For I deliver to you as of first importance what I also received. That Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. That he was buried. That he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. And that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, and to all the apostles. Last of all, as the one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether that it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise as you are able for the knowledge of the name of the Holy God. Galilee. There you will see him, 
just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb. The trembling and astonishment had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for the hymn of the day. Something different, but you failed to live up to your word. 
It just happens sometimes, doesn't it? It is who we are, after all. And I would uh, venture to guess that we are all a little more like Peter in that sense. If you recall, on Good Friday, I read the Passion account according to St. Mark, and part of that account includes Peter and the other disciples telling Jesus that no matter what happens, he would never fall away, that he would rather suffer death than deny Christ. And Jesus just kind of looks at him and says, Peter, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. Now, a few paragraphs later, we heard who was right and who was wrong. Peter was challenged by a young servant girl and denied knowing Jesus, and then after a couple more denials, indeed, the rooster crowed twice. Peter knew it. He went outside and he wept bitterly because he had failed to live up to his word. Now, our gospel text this morning picks up where uh, we left off on Good Friday. It talks about what happened early that first Easter morning. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome go to the tomb. They're expecting the stone to be there. They've brought spices to anoint the body. And they're talking to themselves and wondering who's going to move that stone away. Because it's a large stone. And they get there. The stone has already been moved. And they go in and they see this young man, likely an angel, but Mark says young man. The young man says to her that, don't be afraid. Because usually when people encounter angels in the Bible, they actually are afraid. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I ever want an angel visiting me. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't seem to be a wonderful prospect. But he says, don't be afraid. You're seeking Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He's not here. He's risen. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Hallelujah. I know the angel didn't say that, but that's typically our practice, right? When you hear that phrase, because it's such an important thing to say, especially on Easter morning. Because that was the message given to the women. He is not here. He is risen. He's risen indeed. Hallelujah. Now, that's not the only thing he had to say to them, though. He said, go and tell my disciples, and Peter especially, that... I'm going ahead of them, right? That Jesus is going to go ahead of them to Galilee, and he will be there just as he told you he would be there. And sure enough, the women are seized with more fear. They don't know what to do, so they leave the tomb. Now, ultimately, right, we know that they actually go and they tell the disciples, right? They actually go and they spread this message that was there that first morning and that we hear again this morning. But I like to think that Mark's gospel should actually end right here at verse 8, when the women leave the tomb afraid. Now, I know if you open your Bibles, there will be verses 9 to 16, and there is some, you know, sense in which those verses are fine, I don't have necessarily an issue with them. But I think Mark's original ending is here, at verse 8. And the women are told to go and tell the disciples and Peter that Jesus has gone ahead of them into Galilee, and there they would find him just as he told you. See, this is a theme in Mark's gospel. All throughout, not just in the last couple of chapters as we've uh, read these last few days. But when Jesus says something is going to happen, it actually happens. Just as he said it would happen. I mean, think about Peter, right? Peter, you're going to deny me three times before the rooster crows twice. And indeed, Peter denies three times before the rooster crows twice. Or what about earlier in Mark's Gospel, where Jesus says, Guys, I am going to go to Jerusalem and be rejected by the chief priests and the scribes. I'm going to suffer. I'm going to die. And in three days I will rise. And sure enough, every one of those things happened just as he said they would happen. Because when Jesus speaks, it comes to pass. 
When Jesus says certain events are going to take place, or that certain things mean certain things, guess what? They mean those things and those events will take place. Because Jesus, while he may be fully human like you and I, he is not like you and I. When Jesus gives a word, you can count on that word. It will come to pass just as he told you. And if this is true about Mark's gospel, and I would contend it is, that you see Jesus, even in Matthew's gospel and Luke's gospel and John's gospel, saying that things are going to happen, and then indeed those things happened. If that was true then, it is true to this day. Christ looked at you and said, that water in that font, it is not just mere water. It is water that I use to wash you into my righteousness, to give you the very things I won on the cross through my blood and my death and ultimately my resurrection. It does those things just as he told you. Or that little piece of bread and that little sip of wine that we will take this morning. Although it looks like a crumb and a shot glass, it is nothing like that. It is the very body and blood of our Lord given as a foretaste of the feast to come, just as he told you it was. You are a beloved child of God, forgiven, not because I said so, but because Jesus Christ has said so. It is true, just as he told you. You can count on it. And just as Christ said, I will be betrayed, I will be handed over, I will suffer, I will die, and I will rise again, and all of those things happen, he has also said to you that he will come back and put the world to rights. In the words of our Old Testament text, he will actually come and swallow up death forever. He will wipe away every tear from every eye. If I were a betting man, I'd bet that that would be true. Because when Jesus says something is going to happen, it indeed happens. Just as he says so. Just as he told you. Just as he deigns it to be. And that's the thing. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia, not because I said so, not because Mary Magdalene, Mary, and Salome said so, not because the angel said so. Christ is risen because God has said so, because God raised him from the dead, because Christ is now king over all creation for all time, setting things right. Promising to do that for you on the last day, even as he does it for you now, in water, with, with and under bread and wine, and with the very word that is spoken. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! Alleluia! Indeed he is, just as he told you. Amen. At this point, I would invite you to rise and join with me in confessing the faith of the church using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the God of His Father before all the worlds, God of God, the light of light, the very God of very God, the begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for our sin and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made a man. And was crucified also for us in the conscious blood. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, 
and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Lord of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and a self church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. It is truly our honor and privilege as brothers and sisters in Christ to bring forth the cares and concerns of one another to our Lord in prayer. We encourage them to the prayer guide found in your bulletin. And on Sundays, we typically use that during our prayer time. This morning will be a little different. Uh, but if you'd ever like to add someone to that list, you can always contact the church office uh, or fill up a sheet of paper in the narthex before the service begins. This morning, we will be praying a litany of the resurrection, as we have done uh, since I arrived. It was uh, six, almost seven years ago. That being said, we pray. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, Hear us. Pass the Lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Who was crucified for our transgressions and raised for our justification. Have mercy on us. Who foretold your passion, saying, The Son of Man must be crucified and on the third day rise again. Have mercy on us. Who destroyed death by dying and by rising to life again brought life and immortality to light. Have mercy on us. Whose resurrection was first announced by an angel to the women. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. Who appeared to Mary Magdalene and was worshipped by her. Have, have mercy on us. Who revealed herself to the two disciples on the Emmaus Road and made herself known to them in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. Who appeared to the disciples, bestowing on them your peace and your spirit. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. Who showed your wounded hands inside to the Apostle Thomas, that he too might believe. Have mercy on us. Who appeared to the seven disciples on the Sea of Tiberias, bringing a miraculous catch of fish. Have mercy on us. Who appeared to Peter, and to the twelve, to over five hundred disciples, to James, and to all the Apostles, and to Paul on the Damascus Road. Have mercy on us. Who commissioned your church to make disciples of all nations by baptizing and teaching them. Have mercy on us. By your glorious resurrection from the dead, good Lord, deliver us. By your victory over sin and death, good Lord, deliver us. By your majesty, by the majesty of your risen body, good Lord, deliver us. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, Lord Jesus, that we may daily die and rise with you in our baptism and walk in the freedom of your forgiveness. Grant us, good Lord, that we may set our minds on things above and not on earthly things, serving others as we have been served by you. Grant us, good Lord, that we may dwell with you forever in the new creation as citizens of the heaven of Jerusalem, together with all the saints. Grant us, good Lord, Christ the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and have mercy on us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. We continue now with the service of the sacrament as Christian. The Lord be with you. sins of the world. 
By his dying, he has destroyed death. By his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing.
Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for you for the remission of all of your sins. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. 